Hi guys, I'm Dr. Rajat and today I'm going to be talking about zygoma implant complications. Despite the high success rate like uh, any other procedures in implantology, these implants have their share of complications. Like uh, if I'm talking about intra-surgical complications, invasion of the temporal fossa, invasion of the orbit, cutaneous fistula with the uh, separation in the zygomat zygomatic orbital area, intracerebral that is within the brain invasion excessive bleeding of anastomosis of the infra or vital artery and the posterior superior alveolar artery now talking about the surgical complications they can be easily avoided by thorough planning and by using the guided surgery protocol nonetheless complications can occur for example a case report uh, noted invasion of the temporal fossa where a zygoma implant was used in the pterygoid region. Invasion of the orbit more commonly occurs during cord zygoma procedures because of the anterior implant is closer to the orbit. To prevent these complications, I, you have to identify the infraorbital nerve and the drill, you have to drill lateral to it. Guided protocols also prevent this mishap. Excessive bleeding may occur if the anastomosis of uh, the posterior superior alveolar artery and the infra or vital artery is damaged while traversing the lateral wall of the maxillary sinus. The bleeding also may occur if the masseter muscles in the zygoma is incised. Uh, if I may talk about the early complications including the hyperplasia and inflammation around the prosthetic abutment, this is usually uh, seen in the intrasinus zygoma implant path of the Brandmark protocol and can be avoided by the Zaga protocol. If I may talk about the late complications, uh, you know, oral, oral enteral uh, communication with or without sinusitis or the peri-implantitis. Now, the first line of management for maxillary sinusitis is oral antibiotics and if uh, sinusitis fails to resolve, the patient uh, must be referred to the ENT specialist for functional endoscopic sinus surgery. Now, to avoid these complications, proper patient selection is mandatory. Also, examine the osteometal complex before the procedure and select only patients with healthy sinuses. Prosthetic complications are very, very common, including speech and hygiene maintenance problem if the implant is uh, too palatal from the alveolar crest. This was uh, an issue with the brain mark uh, intrasinus protocol. With the Zaga, Zaga protocol, the implants are kept closer to the crest, alveolar crest as possible and the placement is more prosthetically driven. Some amount of uh, soft tissue dehiscence is expected with the zygoma approach where the implants are placed outside the sinus. However, slight dehiscence doesn't compromise the bone condition. The highly polished zygoma implant surface felicitate uh, good oral hygiene maintenance. Um, complications due to the diving uh, board effect uh, in procedure with single zygoma implant and the anterior conventional implants. The zygoma implants have some lateral mobility due to their length. The anterior implants are uh, rigidly uh, fixed in the bone due to this differential mobility within an imp anterior implant and the zygoma implants. The anterior implants fail more because uh, more than the zygoma implants and, and while this uh, problem is unavoidable zygoma implants still have a very high uh, successful rate. Um, you know there is always a time to get it right in the end. I always have believed when everything has fallen apart so make the time to get things right in the beginning. So you will have to you know work hard work on simple cases initially and uh, you know then slowly gradually you work on difficult cases but yes there will be complications but there are always solution to it so work hard plan your cases and definitely go digital when it comes to psychoma thanks